Psychology is a vast field, broader than you can imagine, and it is connected to every person on this planet, regardless of nationality or religion. To help make this complex subject more accessible, we are launching a series of lectures designed to explain psychology in a simple and engaging way. In Module 1, you will learn how psychology originated, explore its historical background, and discover key figures and their biographies. We will also examine how we perceive the world, why our perceptions differ, how memories are formed and retained, the influence of hormones on mental health, and how different parts of the brain contribute to emotions like fear and happiness. Module 2 focuses on mental health and psychological disorders. We will discuss the difference between psychotic and neurotic disorders, when a condition qualifies as a disorder, and explore both common and rare psychological conditions. You will learn how disorders are diagnosed, when to seek professional help, and how various therapies and techniques can be used both clinically and at home, to manage symptoms such as anxiety, mild depression, stress, and aggression. In Module 3, we will explore the many subfields of psychology, including educational, social, health, clinical, organizational, forensic, and positive psychology, as well as emerging areas like color psychology and dark psychology. All the information, Presented will be supported with proper references to ensure credibility and reliability. If you are eager to gain this valuable knowledge free of cost, please visit our channel regularly and don't forget to subscribe. So let's begin with our first lecture, Early Greek Thinkers and the Foundations of Psychology. Psychology, as a formal discipline, is relatively young, emerging in the late 19th century. However, the roots of psychological thought stretch back thousands of years, particularly to ancient Greece, where philosophers began to systematically explore the nature of the mind, behavior, and the human condition. These early Greek thinkers did not use the term psychology as we understand it today, but their work laid the foundational ideas that would influence centuries of thought on the psyche, perception, cognition, emotion, and the soul. The Pre-Socratic thinkers. The pre-Socratics were the first philosophers to attempt rational explanations of the universe, human nature, and mental processes. Their inquiries were mainly metaphysical and naturalistic, but indirectly touched upon psychological concepts. Thales of Miletus, c. 624-5046 BCE, often considered the first philosopher in the Western tradition. Thales proposed that water was the fundamental substance of all matter. While his focus was primarily on the physical world, Thales' emphasis on a single underlying substance, or arche, introduced the idea that nature, including human beings, could be understood through rational inquiry rather than mythological explanations. His naturalistic worldview laid the groundwork for later thinkers to consider the mind as part of the natural world rather than a divine mystery. Pythagoras, c. 570-495 BCE. Pythagoras is best known for his contributions to mathematics, but he also had profound ideas about the soul and its relationship to the body. He believed in metempsychosis, the transmigration or reincarnation of the soul, and viewed the soul as immortal. Pythagoras emphasized harmony, both in music and the soul, suggesting that mental health could be seen as a kind of internal balance. This idea of psychological equilibrium would influence later Greek and Roman models of temperament and personality. His philosophy combined ethical, spiritual, and intellectual disciplines, advocating a life of self-examination and purity. This fusion of mathematics, ethics, and soul theory was a critical early step toward a more systematic understanding of human nature. Heraclitus, c. 535-475 BCE. Known for his doctrine of flux, Heraclitus claimed that everything flows. Panta rei, emphasizing the ever-changing nature of reality. His famous assertion that one cannot step into the same river twice can also be interpreted psychologically. The self is not static, but in constant change. He introduced the concept of the Logos, a rational principle governing the universe, which 
Later thinkers would relate to human reason and the structure of thought. For Heraclitus, understanding the psyche meant grasping its dynamic, ever-shifting nature. Democritus, c. 460-370 BCE. Democritus, along with Leucippus, proposed the atomic theory of matter, arguing that everything, including the soul, was composed of tiny, indivisible particles called atoms. He believed that mental events were the result of physical processes in the brain, and proposed a kind of materialist psychology that anticipated later biological and neuropsychological approaches. He also posited that happiness, eudaimonia, was the goal of life and emphasized moderation and inner tranquility, early notions that would resonate with later psychological theories of well-being. Socratic and Platonic Psychology The arrival of Socrates, and later Plato, marked a turning point in philosophical thinking about the human mind and behavior. Socrates, c. 470-399 BCE Though Socrates left no written works, his teachings, recorded by his students, especially Plato, highlighted the importance of introspection and ethical self-awareness. His famous dictum, Know Thyself, underscores the psychological dimension of his philosophy. Socrates believed that understanding oneself was key to living a virtuous life. He also introduced the Socratic method, a dialectical technique involving asking and answering questions to stimulate critical thinking and expose contradictions in thought. This method resembles aspects of modern psychotherapy, particularly cognitive behavioral therapy, where dialogue is used to challenge irrational beliefs and uncover deeper truths. Socrates saw the soul, psyche, as the essence of a person and argued that its well-being was more important than physical health. In doing so, he laid an ethical foundation for psychological inquiry. Plato, c. 427-347 BCE A student of Socrates, Plato significantly expanded on his teacher's ideas. In his dialogue, The Republic, Plato proposed a tripartite model of the soul, rational part, reason, or logos, which seeks truth and wisdom, spirited part, timos, which is associated with courage and emotion, appetitive part, epithymia, which governs desires and bodily needs. This model is arguably one of the earliest comprehensive theories of personality and motivation, anticipating later divisions such as Freud's ID, ego, and superego. Plato believed in the immortality of the soul and held that true knowledge was innate and could be recalled through philosophical reasoning, a concept known as anamnesis. This theory suggested that learning was a kind of inner discovery, a theme that would re-emerge in later educational and psychological theories of cognitive development. Aristotle, the first systematic psychologist. Aristotle, 384-322 BCE. Aristotle, Plato's student, made perhaps the most lasting contributions to early psychological thought. In contrast to Plato's idealism, Aristotle was an empiricist, believing that knowledge comes from sensory experience. In his treatise, De Anima, On the Soul, Aristotle systematically investigated the nature of the psyche. He defined the soul as the form of a living being, not a separate substance, but the essential principle that gives life to a body. Key Psychological Contributions Hierarchy of Souls Aristotle proposed three types of soul. Vegetative soul, plants, responsible for nutrition and reproduction, sensitive soul, animals, add sensation and movement, rational soul, humans, includes reasoning and reflection. This framework reflected an early form of developmental psychology and comparative psychology, perception and cognition. Aristotle described how the senses work and how perception leads to memory, imagination, and reasoning. His ideas on associationism, how thoughts are connected through similarity, contrast, and contiguity, foreshadowed later psychological theories of learning and memory. Emotion. In his rhetoric, Aristotle analyzed emotions, such as fear, 
anger, and pity, and their impact on persuasion. He saw emotions as rational and purposeful, contributing to decision-making. A. E. View remarkably aligned with modern theories that challenge the emotion-reason dichotomy, ethics, and human flourishing. Aristotle's notion of eudaimonia, a flourishing life, as the highest human good emphasized the role of character, habits, and rational choice, all key elements in modern positive psychology. Legacy and Influence The early Greek philosophers were not psychologists in the modern sense, but their inquiries into the nature of the soul, mind, emotion, behavior, and human purpose are foundational to the field. Their work introduced key psychological concepts, e.g., reason, emotion, soul, perception, framed mental life in terms of ethics, rational inquiry, and biological function, laid the groundwork for later philosophical and scientific developments, including the Renaissance revival of classical thought and the eventual emergence of psychology as a science in the 19th century. From Socrates' ethical introspection, to Aristotle's empirical psychology, these thinkers offered diverse and profound insights into the human mind, many of which remain relevant today. Write in comment section if you need slides or PDF notes for free. Thank you for watching. Like and share this video. Also subscribe the channel and press on bell icon so you can get more informative video notifications.